Hello, folks. It's me again, Philip Boisell, a.k.a. Rusty Shackelford, and I don't know if I've done it yet or not. I don't think I have, but I wanted to do a quick overview, somewhat review, actually probably not enough rounds through it for a review yet, but my Gen 5 Block 45. So, obviously, even though it's a 9 mil, or I'm sorry, it says it's a 45 it's actually a nine mil that kind of confuses people. So usually when I describe this to other people, I usually just say I have a block nine millimeter. So this particular model is of course a double stack. It has a long handle akin to a Glock 17, but a short frame and barrel akin to a Glock 19. What is the point of this thing you might ask? The reason I like these features are one, my hand is just slightly too big. Or Glock 19 so the handle is ample for me to draw it adequately and then also hold it when I'm firing it and coming down to the shortened barrel slash slide this means there's less mass to pull from its holster or its hiding spot when you want to draw it and shoot it that's what old cowboys speak they would say clearing leather faster so this particular model is now sporting a Surefire, and I have to look at it because I forget sometimes, X300 Ultra V. There's more than a few models of these X300s. The ones that I've seen the most, uh, talking about attachment points, are this one with the screw here, which I actually like more because it allows me to clamp down on it harder, or sorry, clamp down on the rail harder, as opposed to the other models I've seen where the attachment method is some sort of um, friction clip uh, thing. It looks perfectly, uh, perfectly dependable. It looks perfectly, uh, I'm basically trying to say it doesn't look like the flashlight's gonna break off the gun. However, it does wiggle around on the gun, which boils down to just a straight pet peeve, but at the end of the day, I just like for stuff to be clamped in place. It's just the Marine in me. Things have a tendency to come off and then walk off. So this one I bought with Ameriglose with the big red dot in the front. I would try to show you, but I have my camera and my phone set up in such a way that I can't see the screen. The camera on the screen side is unfortunately fogged up. So I, I'm just trusting that I'm in frame, but the front dot here is a gigantic red dot that glows bright and night. And then you got two black dots back here that you can still somewhat see in the day, but they also glow very brightly at night. Uh, shameless plug here. They don't do anything for me, but if you got a Glock with stock sights and you hate them and you want to get something else, I would recommend these Ameriglows. And not, even though I haven't used them personally yet, I've heard good things about the excess big dots. Um, what is the next? Oh, I have to talk about the trigger. So when I got this, I felt as though as if I was okay with the amount of trigger pull it took to break the shot. I was not a huge fan of the amount of reset it took to reestablish the trigger control to be ready to fire again. So I tried a few things. I tried going from the fulcrum of my finger, which I knew was incorrect, to the point of my finger to articulate that trigger with more accuracy. It felt a little less stable. It felt like my finger was going to slide off. So what I did is I went back to the gun shop that I bought this at, and I bought an OEM Glock performance trigger, which is supposed to cut down on the amount of pressure that it takes to break the shot. I didn't see anything that said that it was actually going to take out some of the reset. I feel as though as it has taken out some of the reset, I still have some of those reset problems where I don't go far enough before I pull the trigger again and then get a slack trigger. Um, I know that's going to boil down to the amount of firing I do with the gun. Everybody will tell you that the more you fire the gun, the more in tune your trigger and the internals and mechanics are going to get to being shot for you. But full disclosure, I don't have enough money and enough time to go to the range often enough to 
wear those parts in, in an expedient manner. So I split the difference and I spent the $80 for the trigger. And by the way, even though it's technically armorer level maintenance, it is incredibly easy to swap one of these triggers. I'm not going to describe that for you because that could get me kicked off of YouTube these days, maybe in a Rumble video later. So coming around to everything else, I don't know if I want to modify this Glock anymore. So long story short, you guys know I'm a gigantic fan of a little comic book called Black Powder Red Earth. I knew about it before I got my Glock 45, but when I was shopping for my Glock 45, I thought I was shopping for a Glock 19. And so I bought this because there was no 19s on hand. And turns out I got the gun from my favorite comic book and I could send it off to a company called Joint Forces Enterprises and get it stippled, hydro dipped, Cerakoted, I don't know what they do with the actual blocks. Get it laser engraved. I can make it look just like the one from the comic book. My problem with that is, is I'm a disciple of James Yeager, and I don't take everything he says as gospel, but one thing I do agree with, that when you have a gun that looks like it's for fun, and then you use it in self-defense, that might not look good in a court of law, especially depending on where you live and the culture and the uh, personalities of the individuals that are going to end up on the litigation teams and in your jury of your peers. So that's actually kind of another reason why I got this Glock, which I'll talk about in a second very briefly because I haven't fired it yet, so I don't feel comfortable giving an overview, nonetheless a review. But I think it might be a good idea to have another gun on hand that I don't do all those things with. But I still worry that this might serve in a capacity, excuse me, that will have to be talked about in court of law. So I'm trying to be very careful what I do with this gun. Uh, for those who don't know, the Black Powder Red Earth Glock 45 is in essence kind of something in the way of a Roland special, for those of you who've seen that. Uh, so, sometimes sporting a compensator, almost always sporting a duet defense replacement rear sight on a non-OEM slide so you can piggyback a uh, Leupold or a Aimpoint or a Trigicon or you name it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, this, that's up in the air. This is all that's probably going to happen to this gun until I decide to do something like that or that. Um, this is all... Because it's almost always sporting the Surefire 300, it's usually sitting in my Safari Land holster that's made for that with an Oregon Trail nub mod to make it easier to draw, actually make it possible to draw. I can't get a good clear draw without that on there. And I do have some concealed carry holsters for it. I can, con I can put this down in the front of my pants if I want. It's just not very comfortable. It's another reason why Glock 43X is here. Um, and I think that's about it. What's that, Paul? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. I have to talk about that. Okay, my producer, Paul, has made me aware of the fact that I have to have a discussion with you guys about public image. Something I've had to take very seriously lately since I got a channel or a uh, copyright strike. No, what did I get? I got a warning. I got a warning for my... Buyer's Guide to Selecting an AR-15 Videos, which I will have since taken down and I will have to reload later. By the way, this is the point of the video where I'm going to go from talking about this and reviewing this to just kind of freehanding it and telling you some stuff that's been on my mind while also trying to be articulate. You're going to have to deal with my word flubs, me tripping over my language and all that. So... What I'm trying to get to is there's been a big kerfuffle on the internet lately. Not everybody's arguing about this idea of marking. Everybody's saying that everybody's marketing things in the wrong way. And what they're really trying to talk about is public image. The fact of the matter is all these arguments you've been hearing about marketing haven't even mentioned the actual definition of marketing. The definition of marketing is product communication. It's talking about a Glock and what a Glock can offer and how it might feel to a beginning user, da, 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 things like that. So that's basically what marketing is. But what the conversations revolve around is he's too silly, he's too serious, so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into the minutia. I'm definitely not going to get into the names. So 
this is all happening around the same time I was uploading my videos on the beginner's guide to selecting the airplane. Apparently somewhere along the way I violated some sort of policy and I got a channel warning and that video, one of those videos in that four part series was taken down and I have since decided to take down the other videos. And going forward, the content I produce is going to be more professional. It's going to be clearer and cleanlier, and I'm still going to have fun a lot along the way. I'm going to have conversations with my non-existent producer off camera. I might still do puppet shows with stuffed animals, you know, stuff like that. But when we get down to the more serious stuff, I'm going to give you guys the straight skinny um, in the clearest form and fashion possible. So that is everything I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm going to be doing something I said I was not going to do, and I'm going to be censoring slash cleaning up my social media. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to be pulling a lot of videos off my YouTube, but some of them are not going to be coming back, but I'm going to try to re-upload the ones I know are not going to be friendly on Rumble. So... I know there's a lot of you watching out there who probably hate the politics of Rumble, hate the culture of Rumble, hate the personalities on Rumble. Please just go over to Rumble just for me because within reason, Rumble is going to let me do everything I want to do. And basically that's just adventures and gun reviews or adventures and gear reviews. And there's nothing I'm going to do that's going to get me kicked off that platform. Sorry. Once again, this is a one shot uh, edit, take, cut. So you're going to have to deal with me burping and stuff like that. But I'm pretty much done speaking now. I really just wanted to tell you guys about my time so far with my Glock 45, which admittedly I haven't gotten to shoot enough yet, and then also introduce you to my Glock 43X, which I have not gotten to shoot yet. So expect more videos in the future. Try to check me out on Rumble and also social media. My YouTube links to my Instagram. My Instagram links to my youtube and eventually I'll, uh, you guys will be able to find me on rumble okay thanks again guys